so I'm Krisha, <laughs> and um, I'm co-founder of Vapor Organic Beauty. Um, and like Tiffany was sharing, we're especially known for our radiant complexion products um, that blend seamlessly with almost every skin tone and really do give you a lit from within glow. Um, and the reason that we're making color cosmetics is really, um, well, one thing, I spend more of my waking hours at work um, than I do with my loved ones. And so I want to create a business that is um, a place that I want to be and is working with people that I want to be with and leaves the world a better place than I found it, um, promotes health and wellness for the people that we create products for and um, have a little bit of fun along the way. So those are sort of the things that inspire us to do what we do at Vapor. Um, we set our own standards, a minimum of 70% certified organic ingredients, and the other 30% is essential oils and mineral pigments to, to give the makeup color. Um, and we make our products in our own USDA certified organic facility in Taos, New Mexico. Um, I like to think of our, our makeup products as little units of consciousness um, that we put out into the world and hope they wake people up um, in a little tiny way, but that, that's how I like to think of them. Um, Christine Kahili is my business partner and co other co-founder of Vapor. Um, and she and I had been designing and manufacturing organic and natural skincare uh, for many years, for about 10 years. Um, and a lot of that skincare found its way into natural product um, retailers like Whole Foods. Um, and where prestige makeup is sold. And so we were making skincare for other brands and really have a rich background in product design and manufacturing sustainably. Um, and at the time, there wasn't a lot of makeup, color makeup, that we really could use on our skin anymore because we knew it was in it, it was toxic, and we couldn't wear it anymore. But I was a person who really enjoyed wearing makeup. Um, the user experience, the luxurious packaging, rich depth of color, just basically a luxury cosmetic experience. And we weren't really finding that with the natural makeup that existed at the time. So we set out to take our skincare knowledge and basically add color to it and create a bridge between skincare and color. And that has, has become vapor. Um, Yeah, so I work with beauty um, every day, and that's what I really, I wanna talk a little bit about beauty today. Um, having a beauty brand, um, the topic of beauty is under a microscope for us. We deal with it in our customer service, with our customers, um, we're dealing it with it at wellness conferences, at events with retailers, makeover events, um, beauty is just really under a microscope. And so I, I have been thinking for years about why is this so important to us? And why are we all in this room today um, talking about different aspects of beauty? And basically human, what I've come to learn is that humans have been ritualizing beauty with makeup nearly since the beginning. Um, virtually on every continent, um, his ancient peoples have used plant and minerals to beautify themselves, and this goes for men and women, um, used plant and minerals to um, ritualize beauty um, before going into battle, before going to the hunt, um, in religious and cultural ceremonies, and to beautify themselves for one another's pleasure. Um, this goes for ancient you know, Egyptians, South Africans, North Americans, Greeks, Romans, Chinese, everyone's been doing it for a long time. Um, and it was originally thought that 47,000 BC was the first time that people used makeup. But more recently in an archeological dig in South Africa, um, it was found some, there were 37 pots of mineral makeup and they were in shades of brown and pink. Um, and 
the dig was 164,000 BC is when the, the stuff was carbon dated to. Um, and it, the makeup there in that site was deemed to be one of um, three signs of modern life um, that were found at the site. So, so 164,000 BC is a long time ago. People have been using makeup since then. Um, and it was, was called by these archaeologists archaeologist as a hallmark of modern life. So makeup is very intrinsic to um, how we identify with our own beauty and how we identify with being modern humans. Um, so I think it's really, it's ingrained into our culture, certainly today. Um, whether or not you like the concept of makeup <laughs> and shy away from it or embrace it, uh, it really seems to be part of being human and um, certainly part of our cultural values. And if I flash forward to the 20th century, to the feminist movement of the 1960s, um, there was a huge movement away from wearing makeup. Um, it was seen as something that women were not doing for themselves, they were doing it to, um, for a male gaze, and it was seen as something that women were not doing to empower themselves. It was, it was it was uh, something that people were taking a stand against. And I want to appreciate our, our mothers and our grandmothers who stood up for making a change and stand up, standing up for women's equality um, and breaking through old barriers at that time. Um, they paved the way for us all to make some different choices about makeup. Um, now, I think feminism really has come full circle. It's not about hating men or burning bras or fighting anymore. And it's not about turning away from makeup. Um, it's about embracing personal freedom and embracing feminine power and making choices um, to wear makeup if we choose to. And certainly not if we don't. But I think that there's room for it. and. Um, what is makeup's role today for all of us in this room who may have an interest in a health and wellness focused lifestyle? I get asked at, or I, I get approached by people at wellness conferences and makeover, ev makeover events and even in our customer service um, by people who almost make a confession that they wear makeup and they say, oh, but I wear make vapor makeup um, because it's natural. Um, but it's, they, they come with saying that they're confessing that they're wearing makeup, and I don't really understand that, so I've been thinking about that. And um, I think that it might be some carryover judgment from the movement in the 1960s away from wearing makeup and the, the feminist um, stand that some, somehow makeup is not an empowered choice for people to make and wear today. Um, but now, liberated women have redefined makeup as an expression of freedom of choice. And um, in fact, the New York Times hosted an online roundtable recently where they asked people, how does wearing makeup make you feel? And the general consensus and the answers um, were that makeup makes me feel good, I wear it for myself, and it helps me feel beautiful. Um, there are also a lot of recent studies demonstrating that people, both men and women, associate women who wear makeup with, especially natural makeup, um, with being more competent in the workplace, um, more trustworthy, more likable. And I find that really interesting, that that's, that's a statistic that's both men and women feel that women wearing natural makeup are more competent in the workplace and more likable and more trustworthy. Um, so attitudes towards makeup have grown up since its rejection in the 1960s. Um, we see that beauty and makeup are closely linked and clearly we all know what makeup is, but what is beauty? I think this is another interesting and relevant question. Um, and so I looked to Webster's dictionary and there's a couple definitions in there that are closely linked. One of them is probably the most obvious, which is that beauty is about being physically attractive. Well, there's a second part of Webster's definition that I think is a little bit more interesting, 
Um, it's the quality in a person or a thing that gives pleasure to the senses and to the mind. So we know that um, external or physical beauty is ephemeral and that it's fleeting. But it's the second part of the definition that really um, is more interesting. I think it's a deeper, fuller meaning of beauty. And that is qualities that give pleasure to the senses and to the mind. Um, it suggests that there's more to beauty than, is, than the physical, of course. And there's a sensory, intellectual, and I think spiritual component to beauty. And some of the people who have been speaking today have touched on it. Um, there's a still place inside ourselves where inner beauty lives and it gives pleasure to our hearts and our minds. And this essence, this inner beauty, isn't ruffled by a pimple or a bad flight or the passage of time. It's something that's still inside us and it can be cultivated um, and it can grow over time. And I think that what I like to think about the fact that somebody who has the opportunity to grow into their golden years, they can be more beautiful than the younger person who hasn't had the opportunity to cultivate it. So I ask myself, what is the essence of my inner beauty and when do I feel most beautiful? And I invite you to ask yourself that question. When do you feel beautiful? Um, after sitting with that for some time, I came up with the idea that I feel beautiful when I accept myself. So when I'm practicing self-acceptance, I feel beautiful. And, um, and I call self-acceptance true beauty. So that inner beauty, I like to think of it as true beauty. And I started to think about how I could access this and how I could nurture it and cultivate it and then bring it into everything that I do um, and share it with others, with everything that I create with work. At this time, we were actually um, conceiving a vapor when, at the time when I was discovering this and asking myself about inner beauty and how to cultivate it. We were conceiving a vapor and I received a cancer diagnosis. And uh, it turns out it was breast cancer and it was a huge beauty challenge. Um, so there I was delving into the creation of a brand um, and receiving this this diagnosis, and it was actually, um, I call it a beauty challenge, but I don't mean to make light of the cancer itself. It was stage three and it was life-threatening. Um, and it was a huge deal for me. I was definitely dealing with uh, impermanence and um, imperfection. And how was I going to launch a beauty brand and face um, not feeling beautiful? So. I, at that time, I began to cultivate a practice of self-acceptance, um, and that practice of self-acceptance is really about nurturing inner beauty. And the practice has evolved and changed over time. Um, I'm healthy now. It's many years later. Um, Vapor was launched about eight years ago, and um, I'm now I'm dealing with different issues. Now I'm dealing what's on my mind is aging. And the idea of owning a beauty company and beauty being under a microscope every single day and time passing and aging and uh, the whole topic of beauty being under a microscope while owning a beauty business is a little interesting for me and maybe others in the room. <laughs> um, so this, this, this ritual, um, this practice that I that I've developed is I call it my morning self care ritual. Um, I've been doing it for about ten years, and it's super simple. Um, I'd like to share a little bit of it with you, and if any of it resonates, I invite you to um, take what you like, incorporate it. Um, what I do is take the morning from when I wake up in the morning till when I leave the house. Um, 
to do the practice. And basically, I'm super busy, just like I'm sure all of you are. And so the idea of carving out time to do something else is not realistic or practical. Um, so I, I just take all of the actions that I do from the time that I wake up to the time that I leave the house um, and infuse them with intention and attention and awareness, um, and that becomes my practice. So that when I leave the house, I'm ready to face the day um, and any of the obstacles that are presented with connectedness, and gentleness, openness. Um, and all of this is self-care. And this is cultivating my inner beauty because ultimately my goal is to bring that which I'm cultivating on the inside and express it outward, bring it to work, bring it to vapor and share it with others. So I think that each morning brings the opportunity to, for co-creation um, and to create a new day and to create what you want. Because as some others have touched on, we have the power within us to do that if we can recognize our own divinity. So I wake up in the morning and I set an intention of clarity. And for me, I find that clarity allows me to access anything I need to during the day. So if I need to be forgiving at some point in the day or access strength or gentleness or allowance, if I'm clear, I can do that. And I do the physical action actually of waking up in the morning and drinking some water. Usually it has lemon in it or if it's cold outside, it's hot water with ginger. Um, and I infuse the actual drinking of the water with the intention of clarity. And that's my first um, self-care ritual and action for the day. And it's also physiologically good because it flushes the digestive system, it helps eliminate toxins, and it rehydrates the body. So it's multi-purpose. <laughs> so I have a bunch of chickens, I have other animals, and so my next duty in the morning is to go outside and feed the animals. And I use this opportunity to ground and connect is what I call it. And I guess this is sort of a mini med meditation that happens while I'm actually outside. Um, I live in Taos, New Mexico. We're at 7,000 feet. Um, it's cool mountain air that you kind of can't ignore. It's a little bracing when you step outside most mornings. So I breathe in deeply and, uh, and then I'm going to focus on connecting on the earth energy and grounding into that. And the earth has a frequency of 7.8. It's called the Schumann resonance. It's a natural resonance that's also found in the human body and mind. And turns out that we are in our most efficient and coherent state when we are um, resonating with the earth and it enhances mental, emotional, and physical well-being. So again, there's a physiological benefit um, and a spiritual component to, to grounding. So normally I do this outside, like I said, when I'm feeding the animals, but I invite you guys to do it with me now. Um, if you'd like to, uncross your legs and put your feet on the ground and take a deep breath. Now send a cord from your center. So if you think about your, your core, literally your center, a um, couple of inches underneath your belly button. Uh, some call it the Dan Chen. And sending a cord down into the earth. I like to send that cord down into the center of the earth. Connect with the magma and the magic inside the very center of the earth, that hot molten lava, which I think is represents potential and draw the strength of the earth energy up through that cord as you breathe in. Breathe it into your core, that center, second chakra area, two inches below the belly button. And spend a couple of breaths inhaling the earth's energy up into your body. And we're connecting with that Schumann resonance that gives us more, co more coherent mind, body, and soul, spirit. 
And then I, so we're holding that earth energy in our second chakra. And now we're going to continue to create the connectedness by focusing your energy on your central column, take it up through your other chakras, three, four, five, and then six and seven out the top of the head. And we're shooting a cord up into the heavens, into the multiverse, into the celestial star wisdom above us. And remembering, I like to think about the, the idea that we're all supernova dust. We're all from the stars as well as from the earth. And pull down the wisdom of the heavens, of the multiverse, of the stars, of the potential, of the collective consciousness down into your Dantian, into your center, into your core, and mix the earth and the sky energies together. Rotate them around, blend those two together, and then think about sending that energy into every cell in your body, nurturing every morsel of your being with the juiciness of the earth and the expansiveness of the sky and send that energy into all of the negative space in between all of the cells in your body, all of that potential. I think about the fact that I am part of everything and this practice helps me feel connected to all that is. And so it is. Thank you for joining me with that. So then I go, I'm done feeding the chickens. <laughs> I step inside and I'm going to nurture my body with some superfoods. That's what I like to do. So I like to usually start with a smoothie um, filled with spirulina, chia seeds, probiotics, fruit, fresh water. Sometimes I have fresh eggs from the chicken house. Um, but it's really about thinking of the food as medicine that I'm gifting my body and thinking about... Um, being grateful for the abundance and the quality of the food that I have. The next thing I do is some movement. And I'm very gentle with myself with this. Um, sometimes it's very simple yoga. Um, if I'm f the more I have to accomplish during the day, the more vigorous my morning exercise. So if I've got big meetings or travel, I'm going to do circuit training, weight training, cardio, take a uh, brisk walk outside. And again, I concentrate on the intention. Um, it's all about doing the physical action and infusing it with intention and attention. Um, so I think about the fact that I'm really grateful that today my body is strong um, and flexible and I'm, that I'm able to move and that I'm not ill with cancer anymore. Um, and this movement further circulates the energy that I've been cultivating internally, circulates it through the body, and is preparing. Now we're getting to the point where we're preparing to bring that energy to the external. So after doing exercise, it's time for some skin care. And that first starts with body brushing, eliminate toxins, jumping in the shower, exfoliating, using a delicious soap, getting out of the shower, and shampoo and conditioner. Um, jumping out of the shower and then doing a face care ritual, um, doing that mirror practice that Sarah was talking about. What I like to do is actually while I'm applying product to my face, um, look in the mirror and actually look into my own eyes and have the courage to tell myself that I'm beautiful and that I love myself and that I am enough. And that's not easy some days. Um, but with regular practice, it becomes easier and it helps all of the inner cultivation begin to bubble up and so that you can radiate it out of your skin, out of your face, out of your eyes. And of course, the face is what we show to the world. That's the piece of skin that most people see. So this is a place to cultivate that radiance. Um, I do a lymphatic facial massage when I'm applying product. Um, basically, you've got lymph nodes all through your face, and they and it dull drains down the side of the neck into the collarbones. So applying product horizontally from the center out, and then opening up the channels down, um, down the neck. And if you actually tap 
um, from your jawbone down your neck, you can actually feel fluid draining most of the time. Um, so working sideways and then down and doing that all across the face um, with the intention that I'm preparing to bring literally my best face forward um, and share the practice of cultivating that connectedness outward into my day and the centeredness and the self-love. So this is a morning practice. Um, there's no way to do it perfectly. It evolves over time. Um, and it's really an opportunity to co-create your day. And what that means to me is what do you want from this day? And you have the power to go out and create it. And if you do it with intention, whatever, it's like, I don't know, what is that uh, quote? Like ac action follows intention or something. But wherever you put your focus um, and your intention, you can, you can make whatever you have and you can experience whatever you want because it's about perspective. So after aligning um, and putting on skincare, I... Uh, actually complete my self-care practice by putting on vapor makeup. And I'm so excited that part of my job making this organic, healthy makeup that really does have skincare benefits and is a bridge between um, makeup, I mean, excuse me, between skincare and makeup. This is um, the tool, the, 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 the makeup, I view it as tools that we are creating to help people express their inner radiance. So these are tools to help you take what you're cultivating on the inside and express it on the outside. And um, makeup can be many things. Um, it can reveal, it can conceal, uh, can be a warrior's coat of armor. It can be like a power suit and express power and prestige and control. You can use makeup for self-expression. Um, you can use it to express your personality, your mood or an attitude that you wanna convey. Makeup can accentuate your individuality. Perhaps you love your eyebrows or your freckles and you want to accentuate those. Makeup can be a way to just play and have fun um, and play with light on the skin. So in the bags, the gift bags that you received, the Vapor product is in a little blue bag inside there. Um, and the gift that we had for you today is called Halo, and it's a highlighter. Um, so if you want to get it out, um, basically you can apply it to the high planes of your face, and it goes on virtually invisibly. It's, you do not need to be a professional makeup artist to use this highlighter. You do not need any brushes or a beauty blender. Um, you just need your fingers, and we are really into applying makeup with fingers because typically fingers are cleaner than makeup brushes. <laughs> They've probably been washed today. So um, <laughs> just rub your fingers around in there, get some on your fingers, and then you can choose what high planes of the face you wanna put on. Um, you can choose what you wanna accentuate. Some high planes of the face are right under your eyebrow on your brow bone. Um, cheeks, high planes of the cheeks right on top of the cheekbone. Sometimes it's nice to make a little V here. Um, you can go down the center of your nose, bow of the lip, chin, wherever you put it, you just wanna pat it in. And you may not see anything on your face, but you're going to catch the light when the light would naturally hit you and it's gonna illuminate that and it's going to be a tool for express it, expressing um, the inter inner cultivation of beauty. I want to um, take just a moment before I am complete to ask you about your story about makeup and inner and outer beauty. What makes you feel beautiful? How have you, how do you define the kind of person you are? Do you like that definition? Is there any way that you can tweak that so that you can enjoy your identity right now and for as long as you choose. How is your self-talk? My rule is that if I'm not gonna say it to a close friend, I'm not gonna say it to myself. And I catch myself all the time doing negative self-talk. Um, and I invite you to 
make a list of some of the self-talk that you do to yourself and make a cheat sheet of alternative things you could say to yourself so that when you find yourself doing negative self-talk, you've got a little cheat sheet of alternatives that might be useful going forward. Um, and I'll stop there. I want to thank Jeannie for the invitation to participate. Um, I really am enjoying the conversation that we've been having all day. And um, I have enjoyed connecting with some of you, and I look forward to connecting with more of you. Thanks. Thank you.